Hi, my name is Andromeda, and today we'll be discussing the relations between the women's movement of the early 1900s and the first homosexual movement. One figure who emerged within both the women's movement and the homosexual movement was Johanna Elbrus Gershon, who became the first female member of the Scientific Humanitarian Committee, or WHK. She was a good example of the emerging concept of the new woman, which was becoming a topic of much public discussion and political debate in Germany and abroad at the end of the century. While in Bonn, Elbrus Gershon wrote several books on women's emancipation and its relationship to socialism and sexual issues. Her work to cause the biggest stir was The Love of the Third Sex, which was published by Max Bohr's Press in 1904. It argued that the existence of homosexuality in many different cultures across the world, and at every point in human history, suggested that it was a fully naturally occurring phenomenon. Prior to the term third sex being used to refer to homosexuals, had primarily been used in relation to the emerging concept of the new woman. So where did this concept of the new woman emerge from? Beginning in the 1880s, a number of women moved to Zurich to attend the university there. A number of authors and journalists who were hostile to these women's ambitions started publishing pieces which branded them as asexual hermaphrodites. These students were portrayed as unattractive, cigarette-smoking radicals, and the rejection of marriage in favor of study branded them as social outsiders. Many of these Germans were anxious about the emerging stereotype, and did what they could to maintain respectability as they pursued their studies. They could not entirely help contributing to the stereotype, however, as they had to avoid and guard against the sexual advances of male students and professors. Additionally, wanting to be taken seriously as students and intellectuals, female students consciously created persona, which took on more masculine stereotypes, in an attempt to receive the respect and seriousness addressed to their male peers. It was only after the 1900s that the term third sex began to be applied to homosexuals regularly. It is important to acknowledge, however, the significance of the women's movement and the emergence of the so-called new women around the turn of the century to the development of a lesbian identity. The ramifications of change in gender norms and the relationships between men and women was instrumental in allowing for the foundation of lesbian relationships and identities. Not all feminists or new women were lesbians, of course, but women who loved other women could feel sufficiently emboldened by these social changes to dare to lead a life independent of traditional values of husband and family. The attention that sexology received over the next decade offered a new perspective on the lives, work, and relationships of independent women. By this time, there were already small groups of independent women that were fostering high levels of intimacy among their members, and offering opportunities for couples to pair off into longer relationships. Some of these women even began experimenting with masculine dress and behavior, such as smoking cigarettes and cutting one's hair short. The dynamic interactions between the social ramifications of the women's movement, sexology, and the homosexual movement were influential in creating the conditions that allowed for the fostering of lesbian relationships and identity. As Lillian Federman observed in her study, Surpassing the Love of Men, that love between women could take on a new shape in the late 19th century, because the feminist movement succeeded both in opening new jobs for women 
which would allow them independence, and in creating a support group so that they would not feel isolated and outcast when they claimed their independence. These movements were not entirely disconnected, however. Johanna Elberskirchen is just one example of an activist and writer who blurred the lines between these two movements. The alliances between the women's movement and the homosexual movement were strengthened by a number of scandals around the turn of the century, which created a political atmosphere in which the government seriously considered sharpening the law against homosexuality for a time. To get through this difficult period, homosexual activists built alliances with other movements, such as the feminist movement. One example of the ties between these movements is present within the Institute for Sexual Science, discussed in a previous video in more detail. As rooms within the Institute were not merely allocated for the advancement of the homosexual movement, but some rooms were also given over to feminist activities. In these ways, the feminist and homosexual movements of the early 1900s were largely responsible for the foundation of modern lesbian identity, and the ties between these movements which emerged around the turn of the century would create a dynamic, interactive atmosphere for the activism of the time that served to embolden both movements. Next time, we'll discuss the lesbian history of Weimar Germany in more detail. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have learned some valuable queer history, and I'll see you all in the next video.